Evergreen was formed, I mean originally it was just me and Andy. We were just getting to know each other better and realized we both wrote music and realized we both were writing songs. So we got together one night, um, played them all for each other and uh, realized that we might actually have something. So uh, we played a few shows, thought a little bit more about it and then uh, I invited my buddy Lali here from Mexico uh, to come. And uh, he came all the way from Mexico City and joined us in March. And then we played across the UK a bit. And then in October, Nathan came around. And uh, pretty much from then, we went straight from Nathan coming to recording the, uh, the EP, March is Coming. Evergreen sounds the way it does because the people who are in it make music the way they do. But I think that's what, that kind of makes the beauty of the music. We just kind of all throw in our different influences and our different parts and it kind of just creates this different sound I guess or we're hoping to create this different sound. I like to give everything I've got when we're doing anything in life. And once I'm on stage I get like this energy out of nowhere and then I, I just feel like I can keep playing forever. This is what I loved and this is how I seem to connect with everything in me that brought me alive and so you, you kind of have to go for it. <laughs> you don't really have a choice. Well, we don't have any shows this week, so we are going to our friend's house in Canterbury, which is near the coast of England, and we're picking up two organs, and we're going to be in the car the whole day. One day we slept in the van um, on tour, and I realized that waking up uh, next to your best friends in a van when you're really cold and really warm at the same time, uh, not sleeping much, I realized, yeah, I guess this is what a lot of bands go through. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Andy, can we rig this oh, up to beer? Oh, we're upside down! Oh. Oh. Did I kick you in the head? Oh. Actually, Andy, it'd be better if this was rigged up to coke. <laughs> what discouraged me musically? I think it's just, um, I'm really hard to myself. And I'm really hard to also my band, I think. But sometimes I'm, you know, I think I love one song. And then next day I hate it completely. Sometimes I can discourage myself. Let's see. One, two, three. <laughs> That's how we well, get our instruments. Simon, we have to, this... It's like the hardest part of being the band is probably toss up between carrying loads of gear, getting hurt. <laughs> carrying gear is easy. Not guys going to be stronger. Oh, don't you be talking don't about you, that. Don't you okay. talk about it. So carrying gear, getting hurt, not having enough money. All the stuff that is involved of like, just going for a show. Like all the, you know, like planning before, the practicing, the writing new things for it, like trying to make it better. More so, <laughs> and getting there, getting there, getting back. You know, like sometimes, like not even have enough money to get there, but yeah. trying to make it work. I think the other thing that keeps me going is actually, I mean, just the other guys around me. I mean, we all have moments when you're just like, this, this is terrible. Yeah. I, I don't want to do this anymore. But then you look to your left, to the right. And you, Lalo's just like, come on, guys, we can really do this. And Nate's like, we can push through. And you know, we look at each other, and I don't know. For me, I find one of the moments when I'm least want to get up and just do the monotonous part of the band job. Um, looking at some of you boys and seeing what you do it really kind of helps, really helps pull me through because I'm like, well, it might be a pride thing, but I'm like, well, if they're going to get up and do it, I can't not do it. So yeah. here I go. This has been always like, like my biggest dream ever. So it's like holding on to that, like a promise of like, this was going to happen, you know, in the future. And then it, it actually happened and it's like, I think we all gave up so much to the beat in, in this and it's kind of like, we kind of owe it to each other a little bit. Cause it's like, we're all investing our, like, our whole lives and almost like betting our futures in this. But you know, every, every band wants to go big, but I don't know, I think I've always felt like this, this time for us when you're carrying your own gear, when you played the show you didn't get paid for and no one listened to you really, Almost, it's yeah, it, sh it shapes your character as a band, yeah. and uh, in a way, while it's hard, 
and even like the financial struggles are hard. I, I don't know if I'd trade it because I think we're going to grow through it in a really you know, yeah. key way. And I think if we stopped right now, we'd be like, oh man, do you know those days when we were in a band? You know? And I think. Or romanticize it. Look on it from the outside perspective, you realize what you have now. Yeah. Hey, come on. Yeah.